Hi, welcome to class 8 Geography, Resources and Development. Chapter 1 Resources So what is the meaning of resources? Anything that can be used to satisfy a need is a resource. So this sentence over here speaks a lot about this chapter. There are almost unlimited examples on this planet Earth that can be covered behind this sentence. Let's go through some basic examples. The water you drink for thirsty. You know, that's a resource. Water is a resource. And then electricity that we use in a house. It is a resource. And again, the way we use transportation, rickshaw, to get home from school or anywhere. That is again a resource. So this is all that we are going to study in this chapter. Water, electricity, rickshaw, vegetable and textbook have something in common. We know that they all are separate things. But what is it that is common in between all of this? So they are nothing but utility which means we use them. We don't just keep it with ourselves. we use them. Now, how you use it, that's a whole different thing. What we are concerned about it is that we use these things. We don't just keep it in stock. Therefore, utility or usability is what makes an object or a substance a resource. I hope this line is absolutely clear. Now, the best question you can ask in this chapter is, how does something become a resource? What it means is, for example, if I give you electricity and you don't know how to use it, then how do you turn that into a resource? You go to school and colleges to learn and you learn something. But if you are not told how to apply that knowledge, then how do you make that knowledge a resource? That is a big question. So to answer that question, always remember things become resource only when they have a value. And believe it or not, all resources have some value. Because if you're paying for your education, there is absolutely a value associated in that knowledge. Otherwise, the teachers or the college wouldn't have rolled out that kind of syllabus or curriculum to be studied. If a certain amount of energy, money or any kind of other effort has been put into something, then it automatically becomes something of value because you don't want to waste time behind something which is not of any value. Therefore, value means worth. Now, as we said, all resources have some value, but some resources have economic value and some do not. The meaning of economic value is if it is useful to a country's economy, GDP. Because if you're not productive and not part of that big chain of making and circulating money, then you are not adding any economic value to the country. So when you work, you pay taxes. You use that money to buy things and feed yourself. So all the money that is going out from your salary, that is adding to the economic value of the country. And on the other hand, if you're not working, if you're unemployed, then you cannot earn money, you cannot spend money. Therefore, you are not of any economic value. So this was a high end example from myself. Let's take a little smaller example. For example, metals may have an economic value, but beautiful landscape may not. So metals, iron, aluminium, nickel, they have economic value. You don't get it for free. And the reason you don't get it for free is because you use these metals to make important things like machinery, like buildings, like pillars, cars, household stuff. And on the other hand, when you go out to see a beautiful mountain or a landscape, you don't pay money for it. Of course, you do pay a little bit for the ticket or any entry fee, but that's a different thing. Most of the places you don't pay anything. You just go and enjoy the beauty of the landscape. So in doing so, that's not of economic value. But if you see both the metal as well as the landscape, they both are important and satisfied to human needs. Now, there are some resources that can become economically valuable with time. What does it mean? I'll give you a very simple example. I am teaching you guys this chapter through internet, through this free video platform on YouTube. But if I go to school and apply a position as a teacher, then I would also get to teach some kids. In return, I would get paid. So here right now, I'm not getting paid. But if I do the same thing in school, I'll get paid as a salary. Therefore, some resources can become economically valuable with time. Another good example is if your grandmother says, eat this, this will help you in getting rid of your cold. Now you will not go and question her about the scientific logic behind it. Because it's a home remedy which has been done from years and years. But if you patent it or register it as a medical procedure or make a tablet out of it, they can become economically valuable because you're going to sell them. Time and technology are two important factors that can change substances into resources. To see any kind of a change, you need time. And technology is nothing but the way which helps you in getting that change. For example, machinery, computer, gadgets, etc. So if you see most of the things around us, they've been discovered or invented many years back. And over the years, we have studied the same discovery and invention and have modernized it. So if you see hydroelectricity is a technology which turns the flow of water into electrical energy. So it is an important resource. So resources are generally divided into natural, human-made and human. 
So don't get confused between human made and human because human is we ourself and human made is the things that we have made and nature is natural. So let's read about natural resources. So by the name you can figure out that it is drawn from nature and we use it with a little bit of modification. As we have read earlier, it is of no use if you don't know how to apply the knowledge. With modification, we can use the resources that are provided by nature. So some of the natural resources are air, water, lakes, soil, minerals, they are all natural resources. So if you see, they are all for free. You don't need to pay anything for it. But there are a lot of other things which needs to be changed with the help of tools and technology for us to use it. So now natural resources are classified into different groups depending upon level of development and the use of origin, stock and distribution. So these are the simple uh, factors on which we will classify some of the natural resources. So on the basis of development, we will distribute resources into two categories. That is actual resources and potential resources. So by the name we can figure out by actual resources, it means how much we have, how much, how much of it is available and potential means how much it can create or what is the outcome? What is the maximum it can produce? Actual resources are resources whose quantity is known. So some of the examples are coal, petroleum, dark soil. So these are something that we know and we can figure out. And on the other hand, potential resources are those whose entire quantity may not be known, but these are not being used at present. So one of the reasons they are called potential resources is because we don't have the advanced technology to use a particular resource in its full fledged manner. There are still a lot of things that need to be discovered, reused, but we just don't have the infrastructure at this point. So now from origin perspective, resources can be divided into two categories, abiotic and biotic. It's simple. Just remember abiotic means non-living things and biotic means living things. So just an additional a, which means non-living things like soils, rock and minerals, they all fall under abiotic, but plants and animal, they all fall under biotic resources. Further natural resources can be broadly categorized into renewable and non-renewable resources. I guess you know all about this. Renewable means which can be renewed again and again and non-renewable is the opposite of it. So they can be renewed or replenished quickly. So some of the examples are solar and wind energy. On the other hand, non-renewable resources are the ones which are limited in stock. Yeah, once it's over, it may take thousands of years to be renewed. Based on the distribution resources can be divided into two categories, ubiquitous and localized. The meaning of ubiquitous is it is found everywhere like air and the meaning of localized is which is found only in certain places like copper and iron ore. So this is an important point. The distribution of natural resources depends upon the number of physical factors like terrain, climate and altitude. And always remember distribution of resources is unequal. That's why we have iron ores and other mineral resources at specific places and not all over the country. Now let's read about human made resources. By the name, it is pretty much evident that the resources which are made by human, though the resources are acquired from nature, but they're purely made by human. Some of them are buildings, bridges, roads, machinery and vehicles. In fact, technology is also a human made resource, which brings us to our next topic, human resources. So always remember in this category, people are human resources because humans have the potential to multiply the natural resources with the help of knowledge, skills and technology, education and health helps in making people a valuable resource. That is why if we focus towards improving the quality of people's skill so that they are able to create more resources is known as human resource development. So one of the reasons why developed nations are ahead is because of their human development index, which is pretty much high because their quality of skills that is given to people is much higher than other countries. Or in other words, we say they have a lot of opportunities to grow in life. After reading various types of resources, let's move on to conserving resources. How to protect resources and conserve them for our future. So using resources carefully and giving them time to get renewed is called resource conservation. And then balancing the need to use resources and also conserve them for future is called sustainable development. So if you see sustainable development is dependent on resource conservation because you need to first preserve the resources and then only you can use it for future purposes. So some of the ways of conserving resources are recycling and reusing things. So in order to protect our environment, some of our duties are use renewable resources, which are sustainable. We also need to conserve the diversity of life that is protect the endangered species. We also need to cause minimal damage to the natural environment system, less cutting of trees, 
we need to preserve soil erosion as well. So these are the things that can ensure that we can maintain and preserve the life support system that nature provides. So with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you found this informative. As usual, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed. You'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.